caballo. So the, 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 the manager speaks. So 
in terms of rationale, I don't know why. I just know that we do not have a quorum. Mm. Okay, so you were informed that we would not be interested. Mm -hmm. I, I was informed that we would not we would not have a quorum this evening. So I, I know there were a number of correspondence that I wasn't included on, but that's we have no quorum tonight. I was informed that we would not have a quorum to have the meeting, and so that that's the all the information I have. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Manny. Um, would you like to stay or do you want to? Oh no, he has to leave. Okay. okay, so the manager and his team have left. Let him go. Right, let him go. So what is going to happen is this is the people's house. Right. This is the people's house. So we're going to have an opportunity tonight talk about what we do know. We'll have an opportunity tonight to um, state what's on your mind, and there are three of us um, who can also give perspective about where we stand. The reason we have or had or attempted to have a special call meeting of city council was because a few days ago we received an email from the city clerk who was called by the city attorney, who was called by the city manager, who was informed that there would not be a meeting tonight, that there were no explanations given. I sent a reply back and asked what is the reason. There was no reply for almost an hour. When we looked at the city charter, the city charter clearly states that the city council is to meet every second uh, Monday from at 7 o'clock and every fourth Monday at 4 p.m. Normally, if anything has to change or shift about why there will be a meeting or what the agenda will be on the meeting, there is normally, regardless of who sits in a seat, there's normally a conversation that takes place among the city council. We will talk, we will email, but normally everyone is notified simultaneously if there's something going on. I've been on the city council since 2000. I've been part of a minority, I've been part of a majority, and I'm part of a minority again, and it's okay. It's politics. It's up to the people who sit here. Period. It's up to the people who sit here. But I have never experienced a regularly scheduled meeting of the city council being canceled without any explanation. After I wrote my comments, I started receiving emails from uh, First Councilman Mayor Pro Tem Walker said he was unavailable and could not attend. Councilman Javaris Walker said he was unavailable. I actually had a conversation with him. I know he has a medical appointment. And then um, Councilman Harris sent an email back and said that he had to be out of town and could not attend. And Councilman Dartridge sent an email and said he was unable to attend. Elections are tomorrow. So I know out of those four, at least two of them are here. Got to be. I can't imagine being out of town and you know you've got a big election the next day. So I'm a little mystified about that. There have been times in our history when we are unable to have every member of the council here. And you saying that, haven't you? And we've had council meetings with four people, with five people, and we just keep doing the business. But I've never seen a meeting scheduled, canceled, unless we were all out of town, like an Electricities Conference, which we normally are in August, or it's December, and the second meeting falls at Christmas time. So... I can't explain why we're not having a meeting. 
But that being explained, what I will say is this, is that uh, we're here tonight because we plan to discuss and will continue to discuss compensation for city workers. It starts, it starts with sanitation, but it's for all city workers. So I'm going to ask Councilman Knight if he would give us a little overview of the process because some people either haven't been here or where they've been, they've not been interested in city dealings until they have particular interests that they want to see move forward. But we've been talking about city pay and environment for public works employees and for the least of these for 23 years. I have been. Knight walked in the door 20 years ago. Richard walked in the door a few years ago and we picked it up and have never stopped. Councilman Knight, give us a history. Yes, I'd like to thank everyone for number one attending the rally and preceded this special call meeting before it was adjourned from our man, um, mayor. Uh, I, I do want to say that um, before I give you the history, uh, in the charter, uh, section 34, it talks about a quorum, votes, and attendance. And I had this conversation with our city attorney that he can um, correct me if I'm wrong. But it's section, um, section 34, quorum votes attendance of city council members. A, quorum attendance, a majority of the members elected to city council shall constitute a quorum to do business. But a less number may adjourn from time to time and compel, the word is compel, the attendance of absent members by ordering them to be taken into custody. Come on now. Come on now. We don't want to do this tonight. We discuss this among the three of us. But if this continues to happen, we have the authority through our city attorney, through a court order, to compel council members to come to a city council to do city business. Mm. I'm right now. Am I right? Yes, uh, it, it's actually good back around what the charter says. It would, I think, take a court order to compel the missing members to come. Right, so I just want to say, keep missing meetings. You will be compelled to come and face the people. You can talk the talk, but you got to walk the walk. And this given the history, and I just you know, thank God for Dr. Walker being here. And the history started uh, when I was probably about two years old, well, 10 years old, I was born in 68. Uh, Reverend Walker talked about amnesia at our last council meeting. The historical amnesia and the more amnesia go hand in hand when it comes to Rocky Mountain and our treatment of workers, black citizens, and the least of those. The fight for justice and fair treatment of the sanitation worker goes back to 1978. Councilmember Blackwell and I was part of the previous council who have fought against the institution amnesia that leaves our garbage men and city employees forgotten. Three years ago, we rejected a plan from Gallinger Consulting that didn't address the needs of sanitation workers and other workers who were not being compensated. Two years ago, the city manager came back with a proposal from the Evergreen Consulting. It left the sanitation out in the cold too. We don't need more time to study. We need to do the right thing. We, the three of us, since Councilmember Joint has been fighting for equitable pay and fighting for city workers. And I can remember when we had a situation 
where managers would order new trucks and take the air conditioning out of the trucks so the public work employees could not, on those hot days, when you get the warning on your TV and your phone and your radio, be aware of 101, 2 degrees, that they could go in their trucks to cool off. They said they need to go under a shade tree. Mm, mm, mm. We stopped that. Mm. When the water and sewer, uh, uh, wastewater plant treatment plant, where they had employees going into these huge silo pipes to clean out those pipes with feces in it, they had to wear layers of clothes, uh, cover their heads, and put newspapers in their car because they didn't have showers to take a shower. Mm -hmm. They had to go home and take that home and change or leave their clothes outside on mm -hmm. the porch. Mm -hmm. And their family would have to witness that. Mm -hmm. But that was changed. We've been fighting for workers' rights and equitable pay a very long time. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're here today. We stand with our city workers, our sanitation department. We had asked, I think we were going to read this a little bit later, or the councilman asked that our city manager who left this meeting, he's the one that asked for a $75,000 increase with less experience than any other city manager that we have hired, to my knowledge. That managed a city of about 2,000 people with just 30 employees and a volunteer fire department. But we agreed because we wanted unity. Never again. I told y'all should have did it that time. I just want to say uh, that two council members, one who led the charge to take this council back from all the progressive movement that we brought into the, this city. At one point, we had only two African Americans department here in this city. Now it mirrors the population of this city. We fought for wages for everyone. But two of the council members, one is Lodge Daughtridge, who always talk about transparency, transparency, and secrecy. Where is he today? Where is the transparency? Council member Raj, uh, Harris, I always say, I'm a new council member, I'm learning. But you learn mighty quick. Because you have amnesia of what you said about transparency. So I just want to speak truth to power and let the citizens know what is taking place in the city of Rocky Mountain. Certainly, we concur. We recognize that uh, this council meeting tonight is critically important because of the conversation that we've been having. And to counsel this city council meeting would be to silence your voices that we need to hear. So we thought it would be critically important that whether a majority or of whoever, that it was important tonight for us to open our doors so our citizen voices can be heard. And not only heard, but embraced. So we're here tonight because we want to say to you that your voices, your critical voices are important it is important to the decisions that we will make. It is important to the 
leadership of this city. No matter what you have to say or how long you have to say it, we're going to be here to hear it. And not only hearing it, but we will respond to it. And so when we heard about it, we said that no matter what, we want you to know that this council of doors will be open for you tonight. I want to thank our attorney Jeff for being here, our clerk Kim for being here, everybody for being here. And I want to say to you, you are important. You do matter. And your voices are critical to the sustainability of our city. So thank you for being here. Look forward to hearing you. I look forward to hearing you every city council meeting. And even when I see you in the community, I thank you for your voices. And don't ever let nobody take your voice. Amen. Right. Show us. That's right. Thank you so much. Um, prior to uh, the meeting um, beginning and, and being adjourned, y'all do know we're not in the city council meeting, right? Right. right. We're in the city council chambers, but this is our meeting. This is the people's meeting. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So I have um, a list of names of people who had signed up to speak. I can call that out or you can just come up. Um, we don't necessarily have a three-minute time limit, but I know we don't want to be here all night long. We <laughs> just had a great rally, so um, but I do ask that um, you just be aware that other people have something to say too, and, um, and then we can move forward. And there is a document I will read a little later in reference to a question that Councilman Joyner sent out to the City Council. I'll read the manager's response and then we're going to ask more questions. And what I do want you all to understand is that this is an ongoing conversation. Um, paying compensation is complicated. But just because something is complicated doesn't mean it can't be talked about. We're complicated. We're intelligent people, aren't we? That's right. Yeah. We're very intelligent. That's right. And that's why we have multiple counsel, multiple people who have different perspectives to you. And tonight we want to hear what you have to say as well. Thank you all for the Reverend Walk. Uh, we appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you for your comments. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To members of the council, enough to carry on for the people today. So let's give them a hand. I'm thankful for the wife standing with me uh, tonight. And as I as I stand here, I stand here as a pastor who has as a next month we have pastor in the church in this city for 54 years. And, uh, and I continue to have their support and whatever I say tonight, um, they were certainly endorsed by the Ebenezer Baptist Church in, um, located on, on Raleigh Road. Stand here to say to you tonight that there's emphasis in repetition. Uh, we stop saying sometimes what we say because we're not confident in the content of the stability of it and the historical uh, relevance of it. So, some of what I say tonight may be a little bit repetitious. Um, I stand tonight in support of sanitation workers, uh, largely be because of my historical uh, involvement with them and having seen the difference that they've made 
and I'm making far beyond that role, the daily role. Uh, I'm reminded of our 1968 struggle. And one of the things that have continued to uh, cross my mind that it was at that point that we saw the significant positive change in the entire city, especially the involvement of our employees and employers. It was a transition point, uh, better for some, but as we look back on it, after the struggle of uh, 68, Rocky Mountain has never been the same. I say in the same breath, however, that's what makes this day so disappointing. Who would have thought, who would have thought that a council that we struggled so hard to change and to get people on that uh, we felt would be more sensitive to the needs of the majority of folk in this town. Who would have thought that we would have to go through the changes in terms of the logistics of this meeting center because some people, including my grandson that morning, uh, chose not to, uh, to come. Now, I emphasize that because I want to make it straight, make it clear, Amen. very clear. Blood's thicker than water. That's right. And, That's right. And I am supportive of my grandson. And the reason why I am supportive, because as I said in the rally outside, uh, it, it some somebody has it's like a old uh, scripture that we read uh, that says the poison in the pot. <laughs> Somebody slipped something in him that caused his judgment. Come on now. Uh, but but I, I am very, and I want him to I'm very supportive of him, and I'm hoping that he'll come to the reality hmm. from a T.J. Walker of, of truth and how we, we raise him. Uh, if you're going to stand for what is right, can't always uh, have all the resources and the uh, uh, the nature, the welfare of the people uh, wishing you well and all. You have to you have to make a stand, and uh, that's why I'm so proud that he, he is a member of this city council. But let me just say it. I'm trying not to be too too long. The thing that has been really living in my mind is that the employees in particular, in particular, leadership in particular, need to understand that, that the, the positive change that, that, that have come in this city has come primarily because of the work Sanitation workers. Um, the city was standing on their shoulders. That's when it changed. It was it was a bad judgment, and I hate to keep revisiting history. But it was a bad judgment, and people uh, disrespecting uh, the least of these that caused the drama of '68. Uh, I. I said uh, earlier how much I miss the warriors, uh, Saldane and, and Sister Leo McGrain and Lewis Turner. But these people had, and there were others, had in their hearts that we're going to stand on the side of the right. And I'm glad as I look back at this audience today, and of course look standing right side of me, that there. There are still folks who believe in doing right. Amen. Because if I'm right, 
God will fight my battle. And uh, uh, so people can stay away from city council meetings, and it's so courageous that you uh, are having this hearing tonight. That uh, we we call it that uh, for us, because I've been, as Ruben said earlier, he's been in the minority. Right. I, I, I've been in 54 years I've been here where I didn't even feel safe walking in a city council <laughs> come on now Thank you. And, and a lot of changes have taken good changes <laughs> and we don't need to go back especially when it's, it's over, if it's over the uh, the livelihood of our workers. That's right. Sanitation workers. And as I attended the sanitation meeting days, they make sure that we don't forget to say all workers. Okay. Um, said it can't be uh, nothing but better off if we would consider those people who labor every day that make our city be what it is. Let me say this and I'll but I can get get hung, but I'm going to tell you something that most of you didn't know. And I take pride in this. When we got our new city manager, I was not involved, I was very much involved with old city manager. I love her very much. But that's another story for another day. <laughs> uh, but when the new city manager came up, came in, I had never had a conversation with him and never laid, laid eyes on him. And I asked my grandson, I said, look, uh, get a meeting with the city manager and myself. And, and he did it. He called him. And we met at my office. What could, what could have been and perhaps should have been uh, maybe a uh, 30 minute meeting ended up being a one hour and a half meeting. And the subject was sanitation workers. That was the subject and the only subject. The reason why that was a subject, because I didn't want him to come into a situation where he didn't know the whole story. That's right. I've got, got a friend. I'll shout Bishop George Bella. He said, you, you uh, see my glory, but you don't know my story. <laughs> I want to have no story. <laughs> and one hour and a half, and the only subject, and that, no proposals ain't come out anywhere. In fact, for some of y'all, I kind of test base with me and told y'all what happened. Oh, uh, the subject was, look, give those sanitation workers at least a 15% raise. And uh, I know that they're not the hard hat workers. I said, but nobody would argue with you for going to the lowest and working way up to the top. For one hour and a half, I talked to the city manager, and I was convinced that he would leave that meeting and try to do something to make it happen. And it, he did. Well, a lot of things I said, but uh, I'm closing by just saying this. We can't go wrong for standing with the least of these. I know of the the raise for our uh, police officers, and I think they deserve it. Um, but you you shouldn't have to uh, hold the lease of these down in order for you to feel that you justify because the least of these have carried the burden all of our history. I won't get into all of that, but I fully support our sanitation workers and, and somebody's comparing them to other cities and 
this, that, and the other. But let's just do right, do the right thing, and stand with the least of these, people that we can see in a tangible way what they mean to us. You shouldn't have had years in the 60s, 80s, to go through all the struggle that we went through, yes, cry all the tears that we cried in order to make this decision. Amen. Thank you so much for allowing us to talk to you. We didn't want to um, rush the bishop of the city. <laughs> so we thank you. Thank you, Reverend Walker. Appreciate your words and thank you for the service. To these brave uh, councilmen that have decided to go forth with this meeting, thank you. Let me first of all say thank you for that. I would have been remiss to allow my seat to contain me tonight, not to come behind a man I respect, that of the person of Dr. Thomas L. Walker. I respect him, I've met with him, I've talked with him, but my name is Edward Silver Senior. I'm running for City Council Ward 4. And this is the second time I've seen our incumbent miss a civic duty, which means it is the business of the citizens. And guys, I tell you this, if we don't look at the significance of the matter, that even I see a name that says Mayor Pro Tem under the same name, mm -hmm. to see a meeting that folks walk out on us, mm -hmm. I'm going to get to the sanitation workers in a moment, but this is a calling to me, that people will walk out concerning our matters. And so tomorrow is election day. And may I say you will be a fool not to vote for change. Tomorrow will speak for itself, but tonight speaks for the moment. And this moment to see our, our first word that we honor these for, how can you honor them you walk out? I look forward to sitting beside you. I look forward to working with you. To do my civic duty, because the last time, he was sitting across from me at the polling place on the phone. Well, again, guys. If we don't look at, as we come to this city council meeting, to ask you to respect the dignity of labor, which you can't have economic growth without these men or sanitation workers who doesn't have all of their supplies to even do their job in totality, what they come up against. Yeah, tomorrow is election day. But you better look at and listen at this moment. This says a lot to us. We are a city that's supposed to be in the center of all. And this is how we represent ourselves as leaders. We've got to now do more than what we say we were going to do. So I stand in solidarity with our sanitation workers. I support them. I have met with them. But I will tell you this. Unless we speak to change, and unless we give our voices that we've been given, I can tell that by the way you vote tomorrow mm. and see who can sit in the seat mm. and be reminded of their civic duty. Mm. This is Everett Silver Senior, mm. and I approve this message. <laughs>
I remember. And I want you to do the math. I remember my father, when we moved here in 1974, minimum wage was $2.95 an hour. Mm. And I remember the day we were excited. We moved in the Happy Hill community. All right now. And I remember the day my daddy came down that street, coming from Thomas Street, coming around the loop off of Howard Street with that green barrel trash can, pulling it to each and every backyard. I remember. I remember the hot days. There was no air conditioner in the truck. There was no water keg on the truck. We used to meet our daddy, me and my sister, mm. at the back door with a glass of lemonade. Mm. It was hot. Mm. I remember as it got cold, my daddy's feet began to hurt. And I remember me and my sister getting down on the floor, rubbing my daddy's feet in some icy hot. Because his feet hurt trying to make a living. $2.95. I remember. I remember. I remember the times that my daddy would come home and he would be tired from pulling trash for me and my sister and my mom to have something. I remember. And I take hats off to these men. And I know it has progressed from 2095 cents an hour, I know that. But he was depressed mm -hmm. and he, it, as a man, when you cannot make a living, as a man, come on now, when you cannot make a living for your family, mm -hmm. it does something to you. All right now. It, 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 I remember my, when my father, he got so down there that he went back to New Jersey to stay there and leave us here so he could do better Come on, man. for us. Mm. But it took some coercing by this woman mm. named Emma Wilkins mm. to convince him to come back mm. and divvy it out for us at the minimum wage that he was doing and pulling that trash thing. This is 1974. In the heat of the day, in the cold of the day, I remember the men used to stand on the back of the trash truck in a raincoat. Mm. Mm. I remember when it was cold, they would climb inside that trash truck. It wasn't no heat in there. Mm. I remember that body heat kept them warm. Mm. It wasn't no heat in there. Mm. I remember those days. I remember. Mm. And if it was not for him, paving the way for the men today, come mm. on. Where would they be? Come on now. Would it still be that high trash truck pulling it? Pulling that trash truck, pulling that thing behind your house, dumping that trash can. Mm. And it might have been two or three of them at the moment. But all of them could fit in there. Sometimes he would have to go back twice because sometimes it would be more trash mm. than he could get in that trash, in that green toilet thing. <laughs> I remember those days. And he made that. He went to another job, but I have taken, I have been in the nursing home since 1981. And I have watched the city men come in from health problems, from working in the cold, from work feet, legs, body. I have, I have been there, I have taken care of city workers. That their health declined because of the working in the cold, the pulling in the trash truck. It was, it has been a struggle. I have taken care of those men that came behind my father. And if, and if you're right, do right, be right. And grandma used to say, act right. When you're away from home, act right. Try to, try to about be right about what we're doing here. And we can't do it all, but we kind of try to do this thing together. We can't do it grinding and pushing people's face in the dirt trying to be better than anybody else. We've all been there. We all got some skeletons in our closet. Right. But it ain't about tearing nobody down. Come on, we need to try to fill each other up. <laughs> and that in Rocky Mount, I have not seen. 
I have seen us tear at each other instead of building each other mm. up. You know, regardless. If you do right by me, I don't care if you're brown, blue, purple, green, yellow. As long as you do right by me. Mm. That's all that matters. You do right by me. I, I, I'm telling you, I have been to Mr. Blackwell's. Um, I'm, I'm a color. I have been to his. Giving out the book bag. That's right. I have. Well, just do right. Just, just do right. Mm. Everybody, who you are, so we can be. I'm going to tell us who you are. Tell us who you are. Come on. I'm um, Regina Towns. I am the daughter of John Towns. today to struggle. Um, we see who's here with us in the struggle, and that's important to note as well. Um, you know, during this time um, right now when we're standing together trying to, well, not trying anymore, we passed the ask, demanding a raise for the sanitation workers. Um, you know, we're, we're going to have to be honest with each other and be honest with the people about what's, ha what's going on. This is not a mistake. We know it. This is not a mistake. This has never been done in history. And the people that's walking out tonight that work for the city, we saw that too. But it's not just because they don't stand with us. We don't. We, we didn't talk to every person. It's because they're scared. It's because they're worried about their livelihood. They're worried about their jobs. And when you can't speak up and say how you feel and you have to leave, that means we're under tyranny. This is oppression. This is a public forum. And everybody has a voice. We said, for, how, for what city workers? For all city workers. That's what we're here today for, not just the sanitation workers. So we make note of it, and we see who's here. But let's not confuse some people's, some of our people's absence with not support. It's fear. And the way we fight fear, fear means false evidence appears real. It's not real. It's fake. The way we fight, the way we fight it is by standing together. And being honest and stepping up to it. Now, um, the, the speaker before me talked about health statistics. She talked about her personal story with her family. I'm going to share the statistics that was done in the study in the 1980s with the sledge lot workers right here in Rocky Mountain. Their health disparities, according to an article that was just published this week by Dr. Jamu Hill, uh, Dillahunt uh, Holloway at NC State University, along with some of his colleagues on this, uh, the workers' justice uh, movement. This is post uh, in Chicago, um, .edu journals. You can go check the journal. But according to the, their statistics, 64% of the workers reported frequent headaches, 
while, while at work. 39% of the workers reported a dizziness. 5% reported visual changes. 45% reported upper respiratory irritation on the job. 30% reported throat irritation. 28% had sinus problems. 32% described developing shortness of breath. Do y'all recognize some of these symptoms? So, you know, we don't know. We haven't called for a health study, but we might. Where was this from? This was in a 1988, uh, this was in a 1988 study done with the sledge lock workers uh, that was tying, uh, this article is tying environmental justice to the to the movement. And we gotta understand that this is all connected. It all is it all matters now. So where are the people that's our age? That's my age. Where are you at? Because we need your support too. You're the ones that gotta apply for the jobs, the vacancies. We got money for it. It's plenty of vacancies. We gotta make up our minds that we wanna do it. And and we gotta do that with four votes. We are appalled by the decision of this of the current council. The NAACP is appalled by the decision of the current council. And we and we do not support um, a, a body that's elected by the people that won't support the decision of the people. So we know what work we got to do. But I'll, cl I'll close. I'll close to say, um, you know, we're, we're not going to stop. We'll be back every every meeting if we got to. Uh, but because we we got to stand up for something, right? We got to be here. So uh, thank y'all for convening a special session and. Um, I was we were very disappointed to see the actions of our city manager tonight. My name is Richard Petway. I'm the president of UG150. I'm part of Black Workers for Justice. And I've come to, to let my voice be heard. First of all, it is unbelievable to me that a mayor, mm. that want to run for mayor again, mm. that won't even sit and listen to the people that he won't right. be mayor of. Oh. It's appalling to me to see the city, some of the city council that is not here, that are afraid to face their city people, right. but yet they still stand out in the line and say, vote for me. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I, I go back a long way with the city, with Andre Knight and Ruben Blackwell. We also did a study on the pay scale. And we came up with, uh, uh, I asked them right here in the city council, to, can y'all explain to me what is a minimum, what is a minor, and what is a uh, max? No one could tell me. But yet and still they want to tell me that they can give somebody else money but can't give the other people money. Mm. It's amazing to me when you got people, a city manager, who coming from another city, getting $75,000 more in his pay just by acting. Mm. But can't turn around and say, city worker, here's what you got. It's amazing to me how we can sit here today and sit in this city meeting where it's supposed to be a city council meeting when people just walk out because they want to walk out and not give an explanation of why. It's amazing to me how we sit here and say we are all equal, but yet still you can't stand and hear my voice. We, I stand here today to let you know that it's not possible at this time. This is 2023. And we got people acting like they're still children. That city manager acting like a child, like a child. City mayor acting like a child, but yet he's getting still, he wants to be called mayor. As long as you wanted the name, we could give you a name and you could stay at home anyway. Because a city, a city mayor supposed to do more than that. He supposed to govern the people of the city. City manager can't even stay in here, but yet he still get a seventy-five thousand dollar raise. But he wants to say he's the manager. Manager who? 
Is he managing his children? Or is he managing just, just managing? Or just sitting in the office collecting the same five thousand dollars? We are sick and tired of people trying to run over us and tell us we are not equal to them just because they're making a house out of us. We've been walked on, trampled on, we've been stepped on, we've been chewed out, we've been done beat, and all the way that the city's workers do is asking for is a 20, almost just about a 25% raise. That with the six percent cola and the fifteen uh, percent. If we, if you can't come up with a decent answer to tell me why you walk out, then my vote tell me that I can't tell you what I'm gonna vote for. <laughs> right. And I'm tired of it. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of it. You gotta give you at least you can show us in common courtesy and decency to stand and listen. We know that this meeting is just a meeting because we ain't got the people here to hear it. But we got to we got to speak out. We got to let our voice be heard, even though it's just a few. But I want to let y'all know that it ain't just a few. It's the whole city you are walking out on. You walking out on the whole city. And I'm gonna let y'all know this now. We gonna come back. Next, next week, week after next, week after next, week after next, and week after next till we get an answer. We are tired of playing, tired of playing with this. When you can, you can get away to the part of the people in the city and tell the rest of the part they don't work. They, they not get City workers that been working with the city during the COVID time didn't get a bonus, didn't get a raise. But yet it's still you saying they don't deserve nothing. Mm -hmm. Let's give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. It is time to quit playing with people mind and game with it, cause it ain't this time. Mm -hmm. too, like I said, it's 2023. It ain't the time to quit playing. Mm -hmm. We quit playing a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I'm 73 years old. Oh, yeah. And I worked with the city. I worked with the city in the fleet maintenance department for over 27 years. And I never got a decent raise. Wow. When I left the city, I was only making eighteen or nineteen dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. Because of my fortitude, and because of what I did, because of my father being who he was, I went to the military. I ain't had to worry about coming in, getting out in. But I went to the military, and I did get my degree Praise from Shaw God. University. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I won't be long, but I will be strong. This is the most disrespectful city council meeting I've ever been to. I'm Willie Brown. Uh, you ain't one fifty Durham City Council Durham City worker. This is the most disrespectful. It was. It was. I've ever been to. Yes. But I want you to never disrespect the police. Yes. I'm gonna tell you why. You want raises for all city workers. Yes. They in this fight with you too. That's right. They suffering, but they still got a job to do. I ain't gonna call nobody out, but don't do that no more. Don't do that ever again. Because they working just like you work. They got a job to do. Their job is to protect and serve, and that's what they gotta do. And I'm just putting that out there for us now. Because that ain't what we're here for. That's right. It's all respect. Don't ever do that again. Now, I won't lie. I ain't never seen nothing like that from a mayor or a city manager in my life. Did you see his face on the way out the door? Like it was a hey. And this ain't about y'all. This ain't about y'all. You see his face? That wasn't even professional. That was that wasn't even that wasn't even professional courtesy to the people he served me. That face Sir, like that early. Me. That face like that early. No, it's 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 but I will be reporting to the national. You ain't one fit. You know what I'm saying? I will be calling on some of my brothers and sisters in the union to help y'all with whatever you need. I will be calling on them for them to build y'all a GoFundMe page because I'm going to tell you how this is going to work. You might go know it right now. 
But I'm going to tell you how this is going to work. I'm going to lay the blueprint out for you. They don't even want to see what's going to happen. They don't even want to see this, man. Ask her. Take a note for her. Ask her. Y'all need to get on your phones tonight and call your constituents, their constituents, everybody, and say, look, this is what happened. There's no way Rocky Mountain, the size of it is, everybody should know what happened tomorrow morning. I ain't trying to be funny. Y'all need to not even go to sleep. Everybody <laughs> know who or what the vote for. <laughs> I was born in the 70s. Man, I grew up in races. I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Under the clan with Virgil Griffin, the Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. I used to rock to this trail. What? Well, mm. I'm in the ground. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> I mean, he used to shoot his buck shots through the woods at us. I know what it looked like, and I seen it tonight. Mm. It scared it, it scared me. I almost reverted back to being my old self. But I was so shocked that the despised how you was looked at like you was despised, and no common decency to sit here and face you. I ain't trying to be funny, but that's what it looks like to me. And I'm going to report what I saw. And all these cameras and videos going to see it because I'm going to say it. That's disrespectful. And I want you to understand racism can take a black face too. Oh, yeah. It's called institutional racism. It can take on a black face too. Once somebody get to doing it, the bid for somebody else. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. You ever seen Jane know? You see Stephen? <laughs> we got them too. Mm. I, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be short. But I don't want you to miss this. Do your job now. They don't do nails. Mm. Get up your hind parts. Get your fingers to dial and do the walking like whatever they used to say on Telegram. Mm. Whatever. Do your job now. Let your fingers do the walking and walk through the talk. Do your job now. They can't do everything for you. They don't sacrifice their whole life and careers for y'all. Now it's time for y'all to do something. Get out and vote. Get on the phone, call your people. Talk to whoever you need to talk to because we're not level of disrespect. That right there is not acceptable, not professional. That, that run your city. If it keep running your city, you ought to be ashamed. Thank you, Brother Brown. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah. My name is Christopher Edwards, and I am a resident of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And I hope everyone is in good health and high spirits tonight. I'm um, writing and speaking to express my gratitude for the unwavering support and commitment that the city council has shown toward the well-being of the sanitation workers, especially those that are here tonight. Um, as the gentleman spoke before me, you know, um, witnessing the mayor just adjourn the meeting and the city manager just walk out, um, I had to question myself and ask myself, was I really in the city council or was I in a third world dictatorship country? You know, it's a shame that we vote for these people and we have to consider and deal with the level of disrespect that they have provided us tonight by not even allowing our voices to be heard on civil matters. And it's very frustrating that as we go into an election and you want to earn our votes and secure our votes, and have our support, but you don't reciprocate that same towards your own city constituents. So for those that are here tonight, um, it's a popular hip hop group called Public Enemy, and one of their title songs is called Fight the Power. Fight the power. <laughs> Clay Turner, uh, 706 East Grand Avenue. Folks, uh, I'm mad too, and I'm 
glad I'm not the only one. I've been mad, like shaking mad, all day. And I remember at the last council meeting, and I'm going to turn around a little bit and talk to y'all about this. This is our house now. Right? So, here's the thing. They are not recording it. <laughs> they are. They gone. I see them away. <laughs> Don't reply. We are no longer at the end of the meeting because we have all these empty seats. Okay? And I remember Councilman Knight at the last meeting said he wept. Wept before the meeting. And I didn't I didn't cry at all today, but like I said, I've been mad all day. And that's okay. It's all right for us to be mad. Even Jesus succumbed to righteous anger on some occasions. So this anger is good for us. And we should know who we should be directing it at. And, and we're right. It's not any of these folks here. It's all these folks who aren't here. And I was glad to hear Reverend Walker both before at the rally and up here. Uh, he's a hero of mine and a reason that I moved to Rocky Mountain five years ago. And I respect him when he says that his son, grandson, grandson, grandson thank you, I respect you. When you say, sir, that your, your grandson was raised right, his heart is in the right place. And I believe that when it comes down to it, his heart may come around to the right place. But we're here today, and he's not. Right? He's not. And at some point, all these folks on the city council are on here, and I'm just going to name them. what's going on. Conspired together to cancel this meeting. That's right. Okay? And we know what needs to be canceled. They need to be canceled. Mm. Okay. Right. Come on now. So, live dog tricks. And anybody who's willing to be a two for a nickel political jackal, or <laughs> they gotta go. Mm. Let's do that tomorrow. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I'm speaking on behalf of Environmental Service and my, my co workers. Some had, some had things to do. Stand, 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 stand. My name is Arnie Jones. That's me. Y'all know and familiar with me. I sit around and I should know me, but they're going to know me. Reverend Walker, I'm going to call you Reverend Walker. I appreciate him speaking out, coming out, and support of us. He's a, he's a fighter. He's going to keep on fighting for what's right. I appreciate Andre Knight, yes. Ruben Blackwell. I appreciate yes. Reverend Jones as well yes. for being here. But that shows you who will support of us. That's right. The care, the care for us. I come here, I, I don't walk around anybody. I'm here every time. Speak up here and be diligent and be well respect and receive. That's what I wanted to see tonight. Be well received. But walking out, smirk on your face. Mm. This ain't game. We're not playing games. We're playing lives. You know what I'm saying? We got our families to feed. And like you said, like the, the sister come up here, her father worked all day. Feet hurt. But he had pride when he did his job. Wanted to quit. Wanted to give up. We never gave up. I'm not giving up. I love the city. I love the people in this city. I see people every day. Speak with them. Talk with them, walk with them. Sometimes they'll, sometimes I, you know, you, you look at them and do your job and hurry and rush around. But sometimes the little old lady sits there, 80 years old, she might be the only person you talk to all, all day long. But you take time. Don't you call, don't you call being a good worker, being a good citizen, being a child of God. Do your job diligent. But tonight, it's a travesty to me, disrespectful to me. 
to see things going on, like you said, what Richard Petway said in 2023. It's crazy. And like my brother said, a third world country, a dictatorship, that's what it seems like tonight. We can't come together. We don't need the four bucks. We've been wanting, needing that for what, a couple of years? We never got around to it. Last time it was, what, 41? I mean, one in four, couldn't get, couldn't get nothing going. Couldn't even get a 6%. Cost of living increase across the board. Not just for us, across the board to sit out and win. I love my firefighters and I love my police officers because we need them in the community. But you also need sanitation workers to keep the street clean. We clean up crime. We clean up crime. Mm. You did that? You did that? You did that? Huh? Right now. I'm going to speak on that. Let, That's let, right. Let, let, let that marinate in your mind. <laughs> Like I said, we ain't, we ain't in city council now to speak freely. That's right. But I met some good I met some good people here. Some good citizens. Like Miss Miss E. She's a God sent to me. Huh? Sends me something every day. A scripture. <laughs> and I enjoy that. As well as other councilmen and council members. That 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 uplifts me every day. Uplifts me every day. You know, some days you want to get up, you don't feel good. I'm body aching. <laughs> Got to get out of the cold sometime in the heat of the day. Uh, but we do this. We do this because we love doing it. We love doing our uh, due diligently for the city. Uh, without us, and if we do stop things from going on, it's not only hurting us, but it's hurting the city as well. You know, but I'm glad to see the city behind us. You know what I'm saying? I want to be in front of us sometime. But we got to, we, as our department, we got to stand up. I'm, I'm challenging my co-workers. I'm challenging them. Stop, stop feeling like you are intimidated. Right. Mm. Feel like you're going to be retaliated against. Because Brother Knight said we're not going to tolerate that in any city council meeting. You can, it's here. You can speak freely. Freely. And say what's on your mind. But yeah, a lot of them are scared. A lot of them are scared that they're going to lose this or lose that. Because some they're the only glue to their family. Sometimes it's the only income I'm coming in the family. That's right. You know, I don't know their personal business or personal life, but you may have some people work with the city, but they're in motel, hotel. Hmm. Can't afford to live. Hmm. I got to pay this light bill to feed John, Susan, Jack. But it's hard. Sometimes they don't eat because they got to feed their kids. They go lack. But that's just being a good parent and, and being a leader of your household. Well, they look up to a man, a man leaves by example. They come home and they see him, he tired, but he got to put a smile on his face. Hmm. Huh? He got to put the kids to sleep. He got to hear about their day, even though stuff on his mind, that he wants somebody to hear him. You know? But I'm not going to be long about it, long with about it. But I'm glad to see that y'all are here. And I hope my voice being heard tonight as well as everybody else. And I appreciate all of you. Thank you. to do a little research 
to let us know the impact of the motion of the recommendation of Councilman Andre Knight on giving the city employees an increase. And I, I'm here to hear that information. And I want to know why I'm not getting my report tonight. Uh, we have it to read. I was going to read it. I was going to ask the okay. manager to uh -huh. respond to everyone. Yes. And I told him I was going to ask him. Yes. He, as I said, he did not want to talk about that. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not what he wants. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying I was trying. I didn't read it earlier because I was trying to give him the respect of giving his answers himself. But since he's not here, we will read answers that he gave and then we have more questions. And I asked him to stay. I begged him to stay. He could have stayed for me. <laughs> so I feel some kind of way right about now. But God bless you all for all that you're doing right now because this is from your heart. You know, ain't nobody paying y'all to sit up here past 8 o'clock. And I'm tired and I'm hungry. And I appreciate you. And everybody up here, give them a, another round of applause. <laughs> you are our heroes. You know, it's what we see. You know, everything you can't see. But some things you can see. And we see you all here, staying here, sticking by us. And I really appreciate you. Thank you. What's up, man? Thank you. I didn't say my name. Mrs. O'Ree. Yes, <laughs> Councilman Blackwell, I'm going to stand right here. Um, I just want to say that I asked Andre to go see what they video on the meeting because since he took everybody else, I didn't want them to be able to look at the city page. So if they look at it, they're going to have to come to my page. That's what I want them to do. So if they look at it, they're going to have to look at it on my page. And I'm not getting paid. And they never gotten paid to come here and do those meetings. Okay, um, what I want to say... Um, the telegram. I used to write a lot of letters to the telegram. Folk thought I worked for the telegram. Now, the telegram has hid a lot of history. Everything that went on, I did a timeline, especially with all that stuff with Rochelle Tony. I did a timeline, put all the links up there. What did the telegram do? They wiped it all off. All of it's gone. So the history here in Rocky Mount, a lot of it is gone. But see, I just did the links. I, I couldn't keep all this stuff. So it's gone. A lot of history is gone. And when uh, Cooper talked about, how you doing, Miss uh, Adrian? See, she's looking in my mouth. I know you got something to talk about tomorrow. But um, <laughs> talking about Sled's Law. I work at Honeywell Aerospace Company, right down the street from Sled's Law. And a lot of those folk used to work at Sled's Law. Now, I don't know how many of them that have died on my job, work there, and I'm going to check that out tomorrow. But a lot of people that work at Honeywell came from Slave Law. And we have had quite a few people. I've been there 36 years. We had quite a few people that have died. And I was wondering, was it something out there that at our job? But come to think about it, I need to check that out. But I, have, I am a life, life fully paid member of the NAACP. I remember Black Workers for Justice. I was a member of that with Saladin. Because what I did was, I said I want to be a voice for the voiceless, the elderly, and the young. A lot of people go to the NAACP when they got an issue. I didn't have an issue. I had to seek them. I had to find out where, where the local branch was. And like I said, I, I, I was a member of Black Workers for Justice because I want to be that voice. Like I said earlier, I ain't never wanted for nothing. Matter of fact, my daddy gonna get me. He, he'll be 90 February. And then when I don't call him, he called me. He called me a while ago. I had to call my son in Greenville, tell him to call my dad and tell him I'm in a meeting. What you know I'm in a meeting every night? And plus my wife home waiting on me because I got to take care of something when I get home. But it'll be late. I don't care what time it is. I'm going to be here to stand with these city workers. Because I've been on Rocket my life since 6.30 this morning. And I ain't going home until the job is done. And I'll be back over here 5 o'clock in the morning. But I want to appreciate you all. And, and also, I don't know whether Miss uh, Ori covered it or not. But I want to, to thank Miss um, Bats. But also staying, because I'm quite sure she might didn't have to stay since it's not a city council meeting and the attorney either. But me and the attorney go way back. 
We joke all the time because we, we've been here longer than anybody. And he said, well, man, good to see you. I had stayed away for a little while. But uh, he, he like he mild territory because me and him go way back. But I don't want to prolong it because I'm waiting to hear the study. But I did want to get that out about Sledge Log in the video because I want them to come to my page. They couldn't have the glory of, of, of well, we can leave and we can see what they said. They might see what they said, what y'all said, but they're going to have to come to my page. Thank you. And thank you, Andre, for stopping me. Hi, I'm Abby Lane from First Vice Chair for Texas County Democratic Party. First and foremost, thank you for actually hearing the, the people. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, Dr. Walker, for always hearing the people. Thanks to Kamuya Stancy for making sure that the people always have a way of knowing what is going on in the community. And let's be real. There's no doubt that the mayor is watching right now. <laughs> he has an election tomorrow. And it's funny because I think back to when he was elected as mayor. Instead of being mayor, he decided that he wanted to be a congressman. Yeah, 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 yeah. And every time I see his name, I think about that cheesy commercial that he ran. You know, that's SR for Sandy Robinson. Make sure you vote it right. And judging on his actions tonight, voting it right shouldn't be too hard tomorrow. <laughs> because when you say you represent the people and you're the head of an entire council, you should at least have the dignity to stay around and hear what it is that the people have to say. More so, tonight was the first time I've ever seen the city manager. This was my first meeting, first time in this chamber. And a lot of that is because of the word that everyone fears. And we've heard city workers talk about it over and over, retaliation. I knew that coming here, you get a target. And that fear is very real. My mother, she's on Social Security, but... She's part of a grant program to have her house fixed. She's been waiting two years to have it fixed, and the program goes through the city of Rocky Man. So while I've been watching from the sidelines and behind the scenes, you know, I've had to constantly ask the question, do I stand up and do what's right? Or do I stay silent and protect my family? Because this isn't only about me. Just like with the city workers, it's not just about them. It's about their families. But at some point, you have to say enough is enough. You have to stand up and be heard. And with my mother, her father, he was illiterate. But he always told me the story about when he was growing up and he was a sanitation worker. He told me how in the winter, on the back of the truck, you froze. And in the summer, you just didn't want to be back there because, well, it's the summer and you're on a trash truck. He told me about the time that he'd be picking up a trash can and rats would run up his pant leg. You know, these are things that you don't really think about when you're just throwing your trash in the trash can. So one day I asked him, I'm like, you know, you, you tell me all these bad things about it. You know, why did you keep going it? You know, what made you go back? And he said, well... It's not always what you want to do. It's what's right. Amen. So that's why I decided to come here tonight. It's because it's what's right. We've heard over and over. We've heard from individuals from Durham. We've heard from individuals from Raleigh. Rocky Mount, Edge Home County, all surrounding areas. The right thing to do is to give these, to give these pay raises. We've also heard some say that we have to stop with talking about essential workers. And let's be honest, after what we saw during the pandemic, every worker is essential. Nothing happened without those workers making it happen while we were able to sit home and be safe. It's also funny because as we talk about all workers, I have to go back to Mayor Robinson. Santa Claus. Well... 
You know, he doesn't, he's not very giving, so I can't call him that. <laughs> it's it been good for some folk. <laughs> but I have to go back and I think about it. I think about when the Black Lives Matter movement happened. He was one of the first to say all lives matter. But now that it's all workers matter, there's a different conversation. So, once again, as I look at all these empty seats and all these people who in private talk about they represent the will of the people, I have to ask the question, do you represent the people? Or do you represent your own pockets? The people in this room, you're loud, but you're right. But if you look around, you see a lot of people that have been fighting for a long time. And you can only fight for so long before you get tired of fighting. And that's what some people are counting on. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm proud of people like Cooper Blackwell and Sidney Meeks and so many others who've taken up the fight. Because the reality is, is it's time to pass the baton. And we have to have people to step up and take it. And friend or not, the fact is, is that we have walkers on both ends of this podium. And both were supposed to be that baton. But here we are. Questions have to be answered, but it's clear after what we've seen tonight that the answers are with the three. The solution is where do we find the one to make it four? Tomorrow, we have that opportunity. And looking around, there's people here that clearly want the job. So if that's the case, be the voice tomorrow that they didn't want to hear tonight, and let's fill the seat so that the next meeting is not empty. Hi everyone. Um, for those that weren't at the rally, my name is Sydney Meeks, uh, political action chair of the NAACP Rocky Mountain Branch. Um, and so, I respect my elders, and we talked about that outside. And I respect the love that Reverend Walker has for his grandson. Um, but while I was recording live on Facebook, TJ Walker joined the live. Wow. And the election is tomorrow. And as we are sitting in this room, the people that we voted in office, and I'm saying we as a collective, voted in office, decided not to take the time to be in the room, to look us in the face, and answer our questions, yet you can join your live from wherever you are, wow. my live from wherever you are. And I want to explain, this is a clear sign of voter manipulation. Let me explain what I mean when I say that. When you can spend your dollars to send mail <coughs> to my mailbox to ask for me to vote for you. Mm. But you cannot sit in your seat mm. when a concern has come up about city workers and the pay that they are receiving. That is voter manipulation. Because one, you were asking me to take my time out to vote for you, but yet you can't take your time out to have enough decency and respect to sit in the seat that you asked for. Wow. Didn't pay you to do. I didn't ask you to run. Okay. I didn't ask you to sign. And let me before I say that, we talked about outside that this is a political issue, and I'm going to argue that to the to the point because all issues are political. Exactly. We see what's happening in our state legislature. That's right. We see what was happening in other um, states within our country, like Tennessee. Hmm. So everything is political. That's right. And we have to be okay with that. Because exactly. that is what the country that we live in. That's right. But when we have people that decided to run for office but don't wanna but don't wanna be about politics, I don't understand. That's right. Can't take you, politics. You decided to go to the Board of Elections office. 
fill out paperwork and sign your name on a dotted right. line saying, I want to be a city council person. Mm. Well, that is an elected position. Come on now. And that makes you a politician. That's right. Better educate. So in order for you to want to be in one of these seats, you're going to have to come here and face the people. You may not agree with it, but you signed up for this. That's right. You signed up to sit in these seats. And I know they're watching because one of them is watching my life. <laughs> or if, if you're not watching now, you're going to pop in later. Oh, they're going to look So at I'm going to speak to you directly. Mm -hmm. Troy Davis. Come on now. Robson Williams. Come on now. TJ Walker, why are you not here? Tara mm. Pittman. Yeah. Come on now. Why are you not here? That's what I'm talking about. We have elected uh, candidates here that are not even in office, and they're in the room. Mm. Why are you not here? It's no excuse. Amen. You asked for the seat. You asked for it. You mm. signed up for this. The minute you went to the Board of Elections office, you signed up for this, and the fact that you are not here is not only voter manipulation, but it's downright disrespectful. Yes. That's right. Mm. Come on now. And the fact that you have the nerve to disrespect me, anyone that knows me, I don't take disrespect lightly. Mm. I don't. Mm. My parents taught me to advocate for myself. I advocate for myself at Benning College when they didn't want me to graduate. I advocate myself at the job, and I'm going to advocate for my, not only for myself, but for other people. All right, man. Wow. I come from a, a family of advocates, of activists, wow. not just in North Carolina, but in Illinois. That's mm. where I'm originally from. And the fact that you have disrespected the audacity of you, the audacity, mm. the audacity of you to still want to ask people tomorrow to vote for you, mm. and you couldn't show up here today. Mm. How dare you? People are taking the time out. There are parents in this room that probably have kids that they need to feed. They're taking the time out to be in the room to hear what the case study is or what the what the the information is. Excuse me if I'm out of turn. They're taking the time out to be here, and you couldn't do it, but you signed your name on the dotted line. I'm not an elected official. Come on now, me neither. Um, here. None of us in this room are except mm. for the people up there. That's right. Mm. So do your job. Do your job. Or you're going to get fired. Because they behind you. That's right. When we vote, we hire them. That's right. You're reminded of that tomorrow when you go to the poll. You're their boss. So when they don't fulfill their job and they don't fulfill their, their duties by sitting in these seats and addressing you and facing you and concerning your issues and not answering emails and not answering calls and not showing up to forums, but they want your vote, remember that. Good evening. My name is Joyce Lloyd, and uh, we've heard a lot tonight. Amen. And but I looked to Jesus, and He told me to pray because prayer changes things. We can do a lot of talking. But we got to talk to Jesus Amen. because he changed people's mind. And he touches folks' heart. Hallelujah. Excuse me in here. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand tonight to say thank you for all the things that people have said. Oh, God, we ask you to move in the heart of man. We ask you to touch that in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to heal the hurt, God. We ask you to bind the broken heart. Lord, somebody got so much in you, they don't know what to do. But look on us tonight, God. We are your people, God, and we are waiting, God. We thank God for those that are out working on for our own behalf. God, we thank God for our city workers. So, God, we thank God from the littlest to the largest. And, God, all of them deserve what they deserve. But some deserve even more, but they're yet getting, not doing anything. But, God, I ask you to touch tonight. I ask you of those that may be listening that the daughter has said. God, I ask you to just move on them tonight. God, touch their heart, their mind, God. Uh, and we ask you to turn around, God. In the name of Jesus, uh, nobody knows the story but you. And nobody can work on the people like you can, God. Because you is a silent God. And you do open things openly. And God, tonight we ask you to work it out. God, according to your will. Lord, we ask you to touch God. Even though we realize things are not happening like we think they should happen. But God, you will have the last saying. And you are able to do more than all of us can do together. 
And God, we ask you right now to just bind the hands of Satan on every side. God, we ask you to rebuke his power right now. God, we ask you to touch the minds right now. God, we ask you to change God uh, in the name of Jesus. God, we need our work with stuff. Lord, when I go to the trash can, I want somebody to move my trash. Lord, when I'm looking around down the highway, God, I say, bless them, Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we need you, God, uh, to move in this city. God, even though those are not here tonight, uh, Lord, some are complaining, God, uh, some are thanking you. But God, tonight I ask you just work it out, God. Uh, Lord, the money is there. Lord, the money is there, God. We ask you to loose it, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Loose it, God. Uh, those that are holding to it, it's not theirs, God. Uh, you just let them hold it for a while. And I ask you to loose it there in the name of Jesus. Bring about a change in this city. God, bring about the hearts and minds, God. Uh, don't let hatred and victory come because of these situations. But Lord, let your love abide, God. Uh, and let us be concerned about one another. Because uh, we need each other whether we realize it or not. Uh, God, the old says that if you don't work, you don't eat. Uh, but our workers want to work so they continue to eat, God. Uh, and pay their bills. Uh, we don't know nobody's house and nobody's circumstances. Uh, we're looking on the outside looking in. Uh, but you know the story, God. Uh, you know all about it tonight, God. And I ask you to bless. God, I ask you to move. God, look on those that are not here tonight. No, I don't know why, but God, you know why. And God, they ask for the positions. God, if they're not able to work the position, move them out of the way. And I'm not talking about killing anybody. But God, we ask you just replace them with somebody that's concerned about the citizens of, of the Rocky Mountain area and all the surrounding area, God. So it concerns your people. And God, we ask you to bless. Keep us in. Keep us, God. Let us stay focused. Because we can't really do nothing without you. We can talk all we want to. But God, you will have the last thing. And I'm asking you now, God, to do move work out the situation. God, that the city can come back together. That your people can come back together. And that everything will fall in place. Because you are a loving God. And you are a merciful God. And you are a forgiving God. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. And we thank you for this time. I hate to be the person that follows a good word. <laughs> In other words, I ain't going to be long. I'm going to go ahead and show them what I got to say. I'm Joshua Robinson, candidate for War 5. That seat right there. Amen. Now, Reverend Walker, I married one of y'all. You know, you remember, uh, what's, what's the name? Uh, Irvin. You remember Irvin? Irvin Knight. I married his granddaughter. So we related by marriage. <laughs> Ain't no poison over here. <laughs> you said you needed four votes. Tomorrow you got a chance to get five. Now, one thing that I definitely want to talk about tonight, because I tell you, I, I, I ain't about to follow a good word. I know grandma taught me better. I can't, can't, can't come up here and be long with it. So don't nobody come after me. We're trying to get that. But, you know, it is what it is. I will say this. Pastor Silver, I was on the way here, and I had to shut the truck down earlier tonight. I was flipping a lot of burgers. I burned a lot of burgers because I was so mad. <laughs> Gotta give y'all a little comment right there. <laughs> but I also said, it's time to stop flipping these burgers and go flip some tables. Wow. We nice. have to truly advocate for all of our city. And I know y'all mentioned, y'all told about folk walking out. But I tell you, it's Halloween season and now they just got their costumes out. That's all, <laughs> that's all it is. They already got their costumes on. But the gentlemen that aren't here, I know y'all mentioned also about the mayor and his absence. But one thing that I do see in his, his campaign slogan and his nice logo, as you know, he, he paid for a lot of marketing, mm. is One Rocky Mount. Mm. But tonight, it's looking like some of Rocky Mount. Yeah. To truly get one of Rocky Mount, it shouldn't be 4-3. It shouldn't even be 5-2. It should be unanimous to do right by all of the citizens. Now, no matter if you're for the raise or not, you should have been in here. Amen. Just for respect. 
And that's it. I, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be long because I know it's a good word. Yeah. But I do appreciate this opportunity. I thank you for all our public service being here. Keeping us safe tonight. Because who knows, it could have been some crazy mad folk that was outside right now. Mad that we in here trying to advocate. We do live in that world today, right? So we appreciate y'all tonight. And um, have a blessed night. Thank you. Josh Robinson, Ward 5. That's night. My name is Maury Ninjas. I have come a bunch of times to the city council meeting. This is the first time I've seen so many city council people not be here. Now, I am not a mind reader, and obviously there are lots of mind readers in this room. This is not a city council meeting, which I thought it was. The mayor or any of y'all don't even have to be here because it's not a city council meeting. I agree that if I were the mayor, I would have stayed here just to find out what the hay is going on. <laughs> but he is pretty, a, he's a man with lots of, I don't, not occupations, but a lot of, uh, headings of, of, of lots of stuff. So he might have had somebody, something else to do. Not on a regular city council meeting night. But it's not a city council meeting. It was supposed to be a city council meeting tonight. But if you don't have a quorum, you can't do anything. I don't know. You do know you first. Thank you. 
is that the majority of the city council did not tell anybody why they were canceling a meeting. The cancellation came from the city manager to the city attorney to the city clerk who sent us an email. No conversations are taking place. So don't sit up here and talk about mind reading. We didn't have to have no minds read. We could have had a phone call. We could have had a conversation. We could have deliberated like grown people. But there is a movement taking place. And we will not be quiet. We will not be quiet. Andre, don't blame me three. My husband, he starts hollering at me too. The main thing I want to know is... And I'm not scared to holler because I'm not your husband. All right, sir. I'm not your husband. And I'm not your husband. But I just wanted to uh, I guess a month or so ago when they started talking about sanitation workers, I think everybody ought to be paid so that they could have a good wage to keep their families together. I also, I've also known that when I checked the email, I mean, internet, Kinston satisfied, uh, sanitation workers get $12.50 an hour. Salisbury, I'm not through, Salisbury only gets fourteen thirty an hour. Winston-Salem, that's a heck of a lot bigger, I think, than Rocky Mount, only gets $15.32. Charlotte um, only gets uh, 16 something an hour. High Point, which is right down the road from my hometown, gets $17.47. Now, I've always been brought up that the more education you have, the better job you have. Um, but I also would like to... But I also know that teachers don't get very much either. What well, if teachers need to fight for that wage? They for college for four years, and some of them come out with so much debt, they stay in debt the rest of their life. <laughs> I also, five years ago or so, when the city council got a great big raise, and this is not your full-time job. So, you know, <laughs> why would y'all take a, a salary increase and not say anything about the sanitation or anybody else? Because we did say, don't be telling lies. Right. Don't tell the truth. Don't but speak for them. Take, tell the truth. Did you take the raise? The truth they can speak for them. Did you take the raise? Yes, we did take the raise. Okay. You know why? Because we work for it. All right, now. Not we every day. Yes, like ma'am. You don't live where I live. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I work for it every day. But I also found I out that Ebony and Ivory is in your district. It's correct. So what? You, know why? you never brought that up. No, because, you know why? because it's not an issue to me. I care about where people live in their homes, young lady. Well, I care about where people are living. Is my Ebony and Ivory is a commercial property. Right. Just long. like tons of other commercial properties in Corridor. Why don't you ask the mayor to talk to his friend and TJ and Javaris to talk to their friend who owns it? That's right. And tell them to clean it up. Right. They did say that. Then they so what you're then about? tell them to clean it up. And the people that own it have said time so and time again, clean it up. I'm, but it's not I'm, my I'm priority. Gonna clean it up. And it will they not haven't be. done one and it will, stick of cleaning and it up. It will not be my priority. My priority is housing. My priority is economic development. My priority is equity and pay. And you've got all the answers that I don't sit up here and go back and forth with you about on Monday nights. <laughs> and this is about all you're going to get from me. All right. And none of y'all ever Excuse me. any questions. Excuse me, Miss Benji. Excuse me. I don't normally say much. But Wooten property is in my ward. And it Wooten Boat Factory is in my ward. No one have never said nothing about the toxic slum dump that is on Cokie Road. 
but you got to pass by to get into the city. Now you talk about litter, batteries, boats, dump, and everything else. And we have to pass by every single day to come into the city. I don't have to pass by every night. I don't disagree that it don't need to be cleaned up. But that dump was left in War Three. It may be invisible to everybody else, but it's not invisible to me and my citizens that I represent. And when toxic waste, you heard Sledge Lock employees, and you just heard somebody else say that they came over to Honeywell. Sledge Lock is a super fun site, am I right? That's right. That's right. It was a super fun site. Which means that there was, that means that there was toxic waste. Ma'am, it's not about how pretty everything is. Come on now. It's about safety and health. Amen. Safety and health. Amen. So that's why that's why Ebony and Ivory is not my priority. It looks bad. I agree with you. It needs to be cleaned up. But there are no people around there with homes that have to deal with it every day. It's not producing toxic overflow that's making people sick and killing them. This is what we're here to talk about. It's about lifting up people who deal with toxic issues and situations every day. Well, how long is this toxic waste place that they would be our Man, we're going to get back on topic. Right. I appreciate it. We can have another kind of conversation. We can have Thanks. another kind of conversation. Our mayor can call a hearing on commercial properties that need to be dilapidated. <laughs> taken down. That's, a, that's another time. You see what I'm saying? But tonight our respect is related to the people who are working to keep our city clean. Now, do you support an increase? Do you support a fair wage? Or fair wage for every, everybody. For every that's city. who we're talking about. Everybody. We're talking about. <laughs> and I apologize if my passion overtook the mic, but yeah, I'm passionate about it. And don't be apologetic. Hmm. Don't blame me three. Come on. <laughs> okay, well, I also have some money to Adrian Copeland. And I also have some viewpoints you might not love you might not agree with. But the way the way I see it and um just like what's her name? Cindy Meeks said that this is all political, and, and I agree, and that's really where I'm coming from, is that I've lived here seven years, and I know there has been talks about sanitation worker raises over the years, but I've never seen a fight this hard for it, except for right now, this year, since about maybe March is when it started. And it just struck me as coincidental, maybe not so, that this is an election year. And that, you know, yeah, Andre Knight is running for re-election. He's pushing so hard. And so to me, it struck me as, why not this hard last year? Why not this hard the year before? So that's that's my opinion of it. That's where I'm coming from. That's, yeah, that, that's what I see. And so we've had some, and the way I see a lot of these comments come up, yes, there's both sides of it. It's all political. So the... They were saying in the in the in the ordinances in the ordinances that yes you can compel someone to come to a meeting and they can be arrested or whatever and but the same thing happened back in May of 2020 when the auditors report came out there was a lot of meetings called a couple meetings called and people were threatening not to go and so it's just whatever side you're on if it suits you or if it's inconvenient whether or not you want to follow that or not. No 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 no. Correct the record. That's just what you said, but that ain't the record. We faced the auditor's comments, which we addressed with fact. And we're not talking about the meeting. meetings that, I'm just talking about the meeting that was, was called and had to be scheduled. There was one meeting that the mayor attempted to call. Yes. To ask Andre Knight and Ruben Blackwell to resign. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I was exactly yeah. 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 But okay. So, but my, my point was about showing up but for the, the meeting. The issue is, is that we faced the people. That's right. That's right. Okay. All right. All right. Now, to that point, I also see where, okay, well, if people don't
don't show up and what is your priorities. And I think it was you that said earlier in this meeting that all the meetings are listed, the schedule's printed out. And a couple weeks ago, it was uh, the two of you didn't show up to a meeting. I said it was because you were scared. You said you weren't. You said you weren't. Okay, okay. And the meeting and, went on. And that's and my it went on. Right. It went on. It was about your duty as an elected representative to show right. up and serve the people. And I felt like it was a conflict of interest to not show up and choose OIC instead of what you're elected to represent. So I think there's two sides of all of these that can be shown here. Right. He called in. Right. You get her. Get her. And, and clearly, these things. I got time for that. Clearly, maybe it doesn't matter to you. It, it matters. These things matter to me. That's okay if it doesn't matter to you. It matters to me. We're getting her back on top. We're talking about these. We're talking about these these pay raises and and sort of like this is just brought up with the, with the what I see is yes years ago there was a two hundred thirty seven percent increase in the in the council's salary. And that was gotten, that was you know, secured your own laundry and pockets before you pushed for the sanitation workers. That's that's the yeah. viewpoint that, and that's the viewpoint that I see. If we're here to talk about what the people are seeing and what our viewpoints are, that's my viewpoint. That's what I, that's my perspective. That's what I'm seeing. That and that's fair. And I'm glad to have the opportunity to speak. I'm I'm, I'm really grateful for that. So. When we're talking, okay, we're good. We're talking about sanitation workers, 15% raise, 6% cost of living, when they're already among the highest paid. That ain't got nothing to do so with it. what's the number? That ain't got nothing to do when with it. When is it going to be? Number 48 in the fair wage. That ain't got nothing to do with it. Fair wage. Fair wage. Okay. Then we need to find what's fair because. You don't get to choose. We're talking about a living wage is $15 an hour. Well, now they're going to the lowest one is 1947. Run for council. Is $29 Run for council. Run for council. Okay, all right. That doesn't matter. Okay. Run for council. Okay. This is, and then what I see ahead is you keep pushing and keep pushing. And you're right, you can. And fight for what you want. But, and good, and good. But, What's the consequences if you keep pushing? Because there's economic there's economic implications at work here. Okay, when we had this nationwide push years ago for a fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage, and several states adopted it, like New York State. Well, what happened? You have corporations like McDonald's that said, "Okay, fine, we're going to eliminate jobs," and then all of those workers who are who are at the cashier just now, it's self checkout kiosks in there. That's a lot. So so how many people will lose jobs if you push too far? I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying that's the economic it's reality of what's right. going on. It's not right. Right. It's not. It's not right. But that if, if a if an outs if a company can do it cheaper, we can outsource it. You might can. They might. They can. It's just something to consider. That's what I'm saying. That's why I just don't want to
university and all the work places here in the department. We fought environmental injustice. We demolished the Tip Top Bakery, the Mayola Milk Company, the Planters Oil Mill that was contaminated. And most of these commercial buildings in African American community were left with contamination. It was our goal to clean those up and to bring economic development. It was this council, when this city only had $60,000 in the budget to do demolition. Mm. And in one vote, we increased that with the majority of $200,000 that we can tear down these dilapidated homes. It was this council that saw that our downtown was dying and dormant. And we were intentional about developing our city from the core, our downtown, which we have an event center that is thriving. It was your narratives and others who want to create an illusion that is not safe. You're the one not paying your Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I told her that the last time I told her the last time I told you we let you speak. Excuse me. Yeah, the last time I told you. And I'm gonna say it again, your wife is disrespected. Come on now. And let me finish. Won't you talk about the auditor? Talk about that. Talk about Gary Weeks that stole hundreds of thousands of dollars from this city. Talk about when we, excuse me, you being very disrespectful. I didn't say anything when you was talking. That's the privilege I'm talking about. Right, right. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm speaking. Excuse me. You got some nerves to come up in here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the high utility bills that we had. Excuse me. Excuse me, your privilege has ended. Excuse me, hey, audience, see the privilege? You see Karen? <laughs> You're, talk about the history of when we went to Nakempa and this city, along with Kent Newman, threatened to sue Duke if we didn't get lower utility bills. Let's talk about the false propaganda that you want to destroy a strong black man who's been fighting. And again, it's a lie that a black man walk around in this city for 20 years and don't pay no utility bill. Excuse me, your privilege has ended. And since you got me on your chest, I hope you sleep with it. God bless you. I uh, 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 decided to uh, read the. Uh, and then we were hoping to. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, as I stated earlier, well, Mr. Joyner, uh, Councilman Joyner, sent a series of questions that he stated verbally in this city council meeting. And we received a reply on Friday. I asked Mr. Ryan.